So I've been playing Firewatch. Outside, the great outdoors. Trees, water, dirt, animals, or some shit. I don't know. You'll probably end up running into some teenagers or some asshole walking his dog or whatever. You know what? Fuck outside. I hate being outside. It's like the opposite of being inside. So, what better way to experience it than through cyberspace? Firewatch is a game made by Camp Santo, who are an indie developer. And it tells the tale of Henry. Nice dick, bruv. Henry is pretty much living the good life, until he starts living the bad life. And I don't mean like what you think the bad life is, but I mean like the fucking arthouse movie rendition of the bad life. Think of shit like his wife becoming terminally ill, being kind of a stumpy motherfucker, basically hell. So he decides to say fuck you to the world and ends up working as a forest ranger fire watcher whatchamacallit. But quite soon, the mysteries of the forest rear their ugly heads. Luckily, Delilah is there to help you out from a safe distance. Now, if you've ever heard anything about this game before, it was probably something along the lines of Oh my god, the dialogue is fucking immaculate! And yeah, it's actually pretty fucking decent, mate. Like, proper bands as well, yeah? What I mean with that is that Henry and Delilah are more or less polar opposites, and that Henry is kind of a grumpy, no shits given kind of guy, and that Delilah is one of them snarky, jokey, cursy kind of chicks. And that dynamic is comedy gold. <laughs> The writing here is done in a very natural manner, and the voice cast complements this perfectly. The game packs an emotional punch when it wants to as well, but it's really the casual conversations and trash talking that stood out to me. No pretentious drivel. No overly dramatic wank, just straight up banter time. And it's pretty fucking cool. Henry gon' be all like, Oh man, I'm finding so much booze. And then Delilah gon' be all like, Yeah. It does a really good job at showing how friendships flourish and develop in a very down-to-earth and natural manner. And I had a lot of fun hearing it all unfold. Though that is hearing, mind you. Don't expect much in the way of actual physical hangoutage. All dialogue is just audio that plays while you play. Which is probably done due to budget reasons and also because animating sucks fucking fuck. But unlike a certain other well-known walking simulator, it doesn't attach its narrative to create a cold lifeless husk of a story as it actually enforces the atmosphere. A spooky cave is much more spooky when there's bands happening about how spooky the spooky cave is. And that's pretty good. It's just a shame that the overall plot doesn't quite match up. Thing is, is that because of and then the with Delilah's three foot all over Henry's beard. It's pretty safe to say that to say anything about what I just said and still want to say, that it'd have to spoil the entire fucking game. So, I guess I'll just say that what could have been an amazing as fuck trippy mystery ends up being a limp dick to the face straight out of the most leftist of fields. Though, one thing I will say is that I definitely found myself getting emotionally invested regardless. Mostly, this is because of the game allowing you to more or less create your own backstory by letting you make a few choices before the game properly takes off. This doesn't necessarily actually drastically change anything, but it does create a bit more of a connection than what I'd feel a 10 minute opening cutscene would have done. So, because of that, I honestly don't think that the overall plot being a bit lacking really matters all that much. Firewatch is a single player first person mystery set in the Wyoming wilderness. So says the Steam page. And that is what this is, in that it is a simulator of the walking variety. 
So you get to dick around in the forest for a bit, pick up some guff and look at some stuff, all in order to trigger that sweet succulent dialogue. Unlike most walkie-talkies though, this one is definitely a bit more open feeling. Uh, I say feeling, cause really, you still get funneled down a narrow path most of the time, but it's nowhere near as obvious as anything the Chinese room would cook up, nor is it anywhere near as boring. So yeah, it's not a linear hallway game as it has much bigger areas, and you actually need to use a map and a compass to traverse these North American landscapes. Shit ain't shit compared to exploring an armor map for the first time or anything. But I'd be lying if I said that it didn't trigger any of my outdoorsman McDouchebag instincts. Nothing quite like cutting down some bush with a fire axe, baby. It might start off a bit linear at first, but it does actually open up after the first hour or so, and it has quite a few lengthy tracks through the woods, where you could potentially go away that is not the right one. Though there were still some instances where I got kicked in the dick quite severely by the game's narrative focus. Like, at one point for instance, I had to make my way back down a mountain and go home to my lookout. I could see it right there, sticking out over the treetops. And there was only about a one meter drop that kept me from going straight back to my destination. But no, the game said. Fuck you, it shouted, as I cried tears off the feet while I hopelessly clipped up against the invisible wall of fuck. Yeah, this sucked pretty bad, as it ruined my immersion just a tad. Fucking rhymes, mate? What are you, gay? <laughs> Being a forest watcher, fire catcher, power ranger, whatever the fuck, you clearly have a lust for trash. I mean, all of those good-for-nothing teens leaving behind their beer cans, empty bottles, cigarettes and underwear ain't gonna clean it up themselves. And where the title FIREWATCH might make it sound like the hippest, newest, most genericest MOBA, a better title would have been How I Became a Horda, a Narrative Adventure. You see, this game's world is constant, so all of the granola bars and notes you end up soiling the environment with all stay exactly as you left them. By the end of the game, you start revisiting certain locations and taking some wrong turns, and it ends up being all like, wow! I remember that! Mostly because it was probably earlier the very same day, but still, it's kinda neat. In a similar fashion to the game's opening, it just creates a bit more of a connection as Harry even ends up taking some shit back to his lookout on his own accord. And not only that, but just about everything you find also has to be reported back to Delilah, which gives way to a lot of optional dialogue that'll automatically associate some neat little backstories to these items, be they your own or the game's fabrications. Who knew that seeing your good friend A4 paper sheet clipping on grass model could actually help strengthen the narrative? Well, a little bit anyway. Guys, I'm afraid I have a bit of a confession to make. I only called it a walking simulator cause, well, that's what other people called it. But much like the vanishing of Ethan Carter, I feel that this is very unwarranted. I mean, you actually interact with stuff, rappel down cliffs, climb rock faces, board up windows, run your fucking ass off, do some... uh... plat... Forming. It's not just a game where you go from point A to point B. Well, I guess it kinda is, but if we all start thinking like that, every game is in essence. But anyway, this is a mild, casual adventure game without the inventory puzzles and with a bit more dialogue. Or is that just what a walking sim is now? Cause I mean, I've played the Chinese rooms games and you don't really do shit in those other than walking. 
Here you do. And one of those things are dialogue trees that almost sort of kind of influence certain events. How this works is that every once in a while you get prompted to interrupt the Lila's ramblings with some classic bands of your own. You do this by holding down shift, scrolling to the option of your liking, and then letting go of shift key. It at least works intuitively enough for what it is, I guess. Or I say that, but <laughs> the text used there is one of the plain and white variety, without anything fancy added like a little black outline. So these pop-up menus are very subtle to getting fucked over by literally everything else. This is kind of a nitpick, sure, but also fuck you, mate, I'm the reviewer. And there were definitely a couple of times where I had to finick about to be able to read and given that these shits are timed, it was just a wee bit annoying. This game is pretty neat. Though a bit overhyped, perhaps, by people that get really fucking emotional about their game coverage for some reason. And I mean, I too felt totes a bit emotional once I saw the credits roll by. But to completely disregard it as a game and treat it like it's some fucking life-changing transcendental experience seems like just a bit too much to me. Though it is a pretty cool little story though. And if cool little stories sound like your kind of thing, or if other walking sims seemed like kind of a funky idea but severely lacking in execution, then yeah, I'd say it's totes worth checking out as it actually uses what little mechanics it has to improve the narrative in pretty clever ways. And that is pretty cool, I guess. You dirty little slut. Mwah.